The premises that we previously discussed uh, related to diodes also apply to uh, photodiodes or solar cells. And photodiodes or solar cells are just junction, p-n junction diodes um, that respond to our, or create a change in current or potential when we have a uh, incoming photons of light that are shining on the diode itself. And we can explain those using the energy diagrams, the band energy diagrams that we've discussed previously, and the concepts of what, um, how a P and N type material that's joined together behaves. All right, so we talked about if we take a P and N type semiconductor material and join them together, we're going to get this electric field established between the junction of the two of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens if we connect the two ends, the anode and the cathode of our photodiode, together with a, with a wire. If we connect those two ends together with a wire um, and assume that we're in thermodynamic equilibrium, then since there's no potential difference across either side, across the p-type or the n-type side, um, because of this wire that's connecting the two of them, then that means that the Fermi energy level has to be flat. All right, remember that the Fermi energy level uh, can be measured, the difference in the Fermi energy level can be measured um, by voltage, or that is a definition of what the voltage is. Um, so it, if there's no potential, then this has to be flat all the way across, and we can use our band diagram to see that the, uh, we have our built-in potential in this region right here near the junction. Now, the thing that's different about a photodiode or a solar cell is that um, when a uh, photon of light with enough energy, with a sufficient wavelength of energy, a low enough uh, wavelength of energy, or excuse me, low enough wavelength of light, or, or sufficient fo energy of, of the photon comes into this material, um, what can happen is that it can have enough energy to knock an electron out of the valence band and into the conduction band. And if this happens or near this built-in potential region, these um, newly separated charges have a reason to move. All right, so if it's in this electric field, remember that the electrons are on, on our band diagram here are going to act like um, are going to act like uh, uh, ball bearings or uh, balls, and they're going to want to roll downhill. So they'll be free to move in this direction because of this built-in electric field here. And the same thing is going to happen with our positive charges, uh, with our holes that are generated. Our holes are going to want to migrate in this direction because they act like bubbles and they want to seek a higher energy state on this electron energy graph. All right? And this net motion of charges when we have a photon of light coming in and striking the material in this region when we generate these uh, electron hole pairs because of these photons knocking these electrons um, into the conduction band, we generate a current. And this is the short circuit current that you measured uh, in, the in the solar cell lab. Right? The same thing we can also use to explain what happens when we disconnect the two of them and we just measure the potential across the diode, across this photodiode. All right, in this case, the same thing's going to happen when an electron comes in and, um, or excuse me, when a photon comes in and creates an electron hole pair near this region. We're going to have our electrons being swept to one side, namely towards the cathode side, and the holes being swept towards the anode side. But now, since there's not a complete path, we can't assume that the Fermi energy level is going to be the same um, throughout because we're going to get a potential energy difference. So when we get um, electrons, uh, electron hole pairs being formed here, the electrons are going to be swept over to the cathode side, and the holes that are generated are going to be swept over to the anode side. All right, so essentially what's going to happen is we're going to get a net positive charge on um, the anode side and a net negative charge on the cathode side. And this process will continue, and it, it continues um, until we sort of balance out these charge regions and we decrease the width, we keep decreasing the width of this um, built-in energy, or excuse me, built-in um, voltage region right here. All right, if you'll recall from our previous discussions too that when we uh, accumulate a positive charge on one side, that's going to be akin to taking the Fermi energy level down, moving the Fermi energy level downward, and 
On the n-type side, since we're accumulating negative charge, we're going to move the Fermi energy level up because we're increasing the electron energy in that region. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our conduction band, excuse, excuse me, our valence band here and our valence band here and our conduction band for the p-type and n-type and then we're going to join them together and we see that this process will continue and as this does, as we um, keep knocking and creating more and more electron hole pairs, what we're actually going to do is, and this isn't drawn perfectly here, but what we sh we're actually going to do is we're going to lower this energy barrier until um, the energy barrier becomes essentially flat and um, electrons are no longer uh, no longer have any reason to move when they when an electron hole pair is created. So this is after a little bit of time this process will happen and our uh, energy levels will equilibrate and we will accumulate a potential difference which is measured which is indic indicated by the um, difference in Fermi energy level between the p-type and n-type side and we can directly measure that difference with a voltmeter. Right. And that's what happens is we have light shining on this. We're going to uh, to even out the distribution of uh, positive um, and negative charges due to this electron hole pair creation when photons are incident on the material.